what it is, yo. We are back with another top five exclusive here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. I'm Brandy. And today on top five, we are going to be talking about our top five underdog films. Mm -hmm. Characters that have everything going against them, but somehow they overcome the obstacles to come out on top. Yep. You gotta love an underdog story. Such a formula, but it's so satisfying, it's right? So yes, it is. <laughs> um, all right, did you want to start off this time? Sure, I'll start. Um, my number five is a movie I think is pretty underrated, but that could be because I'm a sucker for baseball movies and I'm a sucker for Dennis Quaid, and that is The Rookie from 2002, mm. which I think is just a delightful little film mm -hmm. about a uh, high school baseball coach getting a chance in his 40s to be a big league pitcher um going through the minor leagues um making it to the show you know like mm -hmm. uh i don't know it's it it's it's tennis quaid and he gets to go and be part of yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I just it brings a smile to my face yeah i mean it's one of those like I mean, like this topic is, you know, yeah. it's one of those great underdog <laughs> sports films. Um, you know, here's a guy who's kind of like supposed to be over the hill or past mm -hmm. his prime, and somehow he like magically just yeah. has the ability to, you know, play with the young guys and get back into the major leagues. It's it's a pretty good story. So it's great. It's it's like one you can watch with the whole family. Mm, yes, absolutely. Moving on to my number five film. My number five is from 1993. It's more of a personal pick. Uh, definitely one of those movies that I grew up loving. Cool Runnings. <laughs> All right. Okay. The Jamaican bobsled team. Everybody likes this movie, right? Made up of a bunch of sprinters that weren't able to make it to the Olympics in their own sports. Mm -hmm. So they... What's the next best thing? Oh, let's Hanging out bobsled. Candy. Let's bobsled <laughs> race. Um, I, I mean... I think it's just one of those great entertaining stories. Um, like you said, John Candy is excellent in this movie. Um, I mean, gosh, you know, these guys just want to be able to do this thing. And <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't even know if there's snow in Jamaica, you know, like. Pretty sure that's part of the plot that they've yeah, never like, seen how so does that, Like, how does that even register? But yet, I mean, at, at the end, you know, where they sort of, I mean, I don't want to give it away for those who haven't seen it. And if you haven't well, seen it, what's wrong running. with you? I mean, just thinking so about it now, really my heartstrings are tugging. It's, oh, I know. Okay. We're all just right. going to keep saying that about like, all these movies, the heartstrings. I know, right? All right. A little bit um, off the path with my number four, which is a documentary, which I thought okay. was one of the best movies of 2007, and that is The King of Kong. Mm -hmm. Steve yes. Weeby trying to take on the big champ in Donkey Kong, Billy Mitchell. I mean, you can say what you will about whether the film is... Uh, has some heightened editing going on <laughs> to increase that rivalry but it yeah. is so entertaining like it is uh, it's been said before basically a, an incredibly entertaining sports film that happens to be about two dudes playing video <laughs> games yeah <laughs> just a great movie and um really a master class on how to sell that underdog story. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny how those two characters contrast. You have like this family man who practices in his garage, and then you have <laughs> yes. this guy with the Jesus beard and the tie, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm the greatest. And then, I mean, sauce. everyone, <laughs> he makes hot sauce. And then like, <laughs> the people like between them, they're like looking at that video, they're like, oh, did he actually edit this? How long did he do it? It's just so entertaining, uh, but so, so awesome. It is it's a, a great really cool movie. story. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Moving on to my number four film. Uh, my number four film is from 1995. It is Babe. Oh. <laughs> What all, a good pick, yeah. All Babe wants to do is just, you know, Everybody knows herd I love some babe. sheep, you know? He just <laughs> wants to be a sheepdog, man. <laughs> Bar Ram you. Why can't he just do it, you know? I mean, again, why kinda can't like, he just kind of like it. Cool Runs, you have this sort of like fish out of water, like totally not in their element, but yet through <laughs> Babe's own charm and his own lovability, he kind of like turns everyone in that, in that farm, uh, Man, James Cromwell, kind of an underdog himself, like being taunted and made fun of when he brings Babe to the competition. But <laughs> look what happens, you know. It's an awesome movie. The sequel is great, too. I mean, if you don't like Babe, I don't want to know you. 
I think I said like the exact same thing when I talked about Baby Woman Shot by the Animal Films. It's yes. Like, you part of cool. <laughs> yes. Okay. Number three, uh, one of my favorite sports movies uh, that turned into one of my favorite TV shows of all time, Friday Night Lights, oh. The Panthers, the football team made up of a bunch of guys who want it so bad, but just it's a small town. The talent pool is a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. They're going to be going up against some big guys from some big cities. And then you get all the individual storylines going on, too, with family troubles that individual players are having to overcome, the injuries, the, oh, the heartstrings. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I think it's a great movie, um, uh, you know, and it's a whole team full of underdogs basically mm -hmm. coming together to try to make something happen, and I won't give away whether they win or not, because if you haven't seen it, you really need to. I guess I really need to. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I think I've told you this I know. Like a I will dozen get to times. It, and I know you love the show too. Mm -hmm. I know it won a couple of Emmys just recently. I'm yeah. definitely going to check Kyle it out. Taylor. So it's going to be on there for real. Speaking of football films, my number three underdog story is from 2000. It is Remember the Titans. Oh, okay. Not only does this team have to overcome the hurdle of defeating their opponents, they have to overcome the hurdle of racism within <laughs> their own group. So it's like a multiple underdog story. I mean, Denzel Washington, Will Patton, two coaches that have to, you know, join forces to bring these two, I mean, cultures together, really. Uh, I mean, everyone within the team is an underdog. Uh, their own prejudices definitely plays a factor in, into the movie, um, but it's, it's, I mean, it's just a great emotional story. I mean, you could take a lot of, I'm guessing you could take a lot of what in Friday Night Lights and <laughs> say it about Remember the Titans. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a great movie, so. I don't really, I don't really have much to add. Really? I saw it once, like, forever ago, I don't know. Oh. 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 Sorry. Sorry. Boo. Okay. Is there a scene where on. they dance? Is there like a dancing, singing scene? Oh, sure there is. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I remember that. I remember Heck that. Yeah, dude. Okay. My it number two be. for the children of the 80s, 1984, The Karate Kid. <laughs> I knew you were going to put this. I knew you were going to put this. Of course. Of course, of course you, have put this. you have Come to. You have to. Come on. Yeah. It's like one guy against this band of evil guys, and then they're led <laughs> by this bigger evil guy. <laughs> And in the end, he's all injured because they hurt him. It's not fair. But he comes back. Comes back with a crazy crane <laughs> kick. The crane. Yes. The crane. Yes. Um, Everybody's I mean, seen this. I don't even say why it's like still a lot awesome. Ralph Macchio. It's like a requirement to see. I mean, <laughs> if you if you just love sports films, if you love films in general, you should yeah. watch this movie. Um, going to get the girl. Spoiler. <laughs> Goes to school dressed up as a shower. He's got to overcome their prejudice against Jersey people. I guess prejudice plays into it now. Oh, gosh. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going with we that. We love movie. the Karate Kid we here at the, the MacGuffin. Kid. Yes, we do. All right. Okay. Moving on to my number two. Um, my number two film is actually from last year. Directed by David O. Russell. It is The Fighter. Um, again, another story about this guy mickey ward coming up in the ranks he's supposed to be over the hill he has you know family problems to put it mildly oh um God. i mean he he gets beat up he gets treated badly but yet he somehow perseveres mm. he's able to go up you know again up the ranks to the championship um i remember watching the actual guy uh fight Arturo Gotti back in the day and I mean seeing that story play out in real life I really wanted to see like wow this guy's pretty pretty crazy I'd like to know what his his story is all about and what do you know the film comes out you know a couple years later um I mean he's a stand-up dude uh the relationship that, that he has with his brother uh Dickie is uh it's a love-hate relationship mm -hmm. you know definitely but they're two characters that are just really really interesting uh, on camera um yeah, I mean, it was one of my favorite films of last year, so it's it's a great film. So, yeah, mm. I like Mark Wahlberg a lot, but I wasn't so keen on this movie. I thought it. I know that the details are based on a true story, but it still mm. comes off kind of cartoonish. A uh, lot of it does the details. Okay. Mm, right. Seven crazy sisters sitting around. Whatever. <laughs> okay, but. 
But if we're going to talk about boxing and we're going to talk about underdogs, then, I mean, you got to talk about Rocky. Oh, yes, yeah, son. Is that your number one, Of course two? it is. Of yeah. course it is. It's like the quintessential <laughs> underdog film, you know? Uh, I mean... What, what else can you say? I mean, I bet you if you asked anyone on the street about underdog sports films, they would probably say Rocky, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, everything about his life is like a struggle. I mean, he's kind of a washed... He is a washed-up fighter in the beginning yeah. of that film. He he collects money for, like, this low-rent bookie. Uh, yeah. I mean, even, like, the little girl, like, chews him out for no reason, just for giving her advice and stuff. It's like, wow, just give this guy, like, a break, you know? I mean... I don't know. And, and Sylvester Stallone, I mean, it's an underdog story of how that film came about and how his career mm. just kind of skyrocketed uh, from that point. I mean, it's one of the I mean, it's one of the great American films, honestly. Yeah, it's it's really good. And there are just individual scenes from it that I think about a lot that don't even have anything to do with the actual like fights that go on, you know, mm -hmm. just him like sitting in his bedroom, like just trying to describe what he wants and why he wants it so bad to Adrian, yeah, yeah i mean that's, that's great but stuff. the fight scenes are pretty intense yes. i mean that part where apollo creed like knocks him down and mickey is, is telling him stay down stay down but rocky's like hell no this is an <laughs> underdog film and he like yeah. climbs up and apollo creed's like what <laughs> the heck dude you know what can I do to keep this guy down? And then, bam, you know. It's just... This is making me want you to, like, recreate Rocky, like, be kind oh, of Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> like, and then he was all, no way, I'm an underdog. Cut me, Mick, cut me. <laughs> Heck yeah. Love that movie. Dude. Okay. So that does it <laughs> for our top five underdog films. If you have any underdog films that you'd like to share, please let us know at MacGuffinPodcast.com, and we'll catch you guys next time.